I picked up this cute hutch at a yard sale for a song. I went ahead and cleaned it with Dixie Bell's White Lightning and also primed it with Dixie Bell's Boss in Clear. It gives it a nice gripping surface for your paint. I picked this Waverly chalk paint up from Walmart. It's a great product. It's affordable and it is thick and creamy. I use a water mister bottle and I spray down the piece before I put the paint on it. And I also keep my paintbrush moist by spritzing it with the water bottle. These hutches do have a lot of surface space, a lot of curves on the headers and on the sides where the curves do happen. You need to make sure that the paint is smooth and it doesn't collect and start to drip. So I usually check this out several times. After painting this piece with two coats, I did make the choice and decision to paint it a third time. With the light colors, sometimes you just need a little bit more paint to cover the darker wood. I picked up this really cool barn wood looking peel and stick wallpaper at an actual yard sale. I couldn't believe it. The girl did say she purchased it on Amazon, so I'm sure it can be found there. This was my first attempt doing the peel and stick wallpaper, and it was a little tricky, but I did get it figured out eventually. I turned it backwards because it had the grid on the paper that you peel off. And so you can mark directly on it for your measurements. And this really proved helpful. This peel and stick wallpaper is very thick, so I recommend sharp scissors and also a sharp box cutting tool because you need it just to trim off any excess. After cutting out my piece, I like to make sure that it fits. And so I put it up here just for viewing and make sure that I didn't need to do anything at this moment. And then I went ahead and got the other shelves backing ready as well, cutting those down to size, making sure they're all ready. That's not now my next step will be to finish the cabinet before getting started on peeling the um, backs off of this and actually placing it. We need to go ahead and finish this hutch and have everything Thing done prior to doing the peel and stick wallpaper. That will be our last step. So bear with me as we finish the hutch and, uh, and then we will come back to the wallpaper. Now, because I'm using the rustic barn wood backing, I wanted to grunge up my, this yellow just a little bit. I picked up some Valspar antiquing glaze in brown. I put on some gloves because I don't want my hands stained brown and then I just took an old cut up towel spritzed it with a little bit of water added the glaze on it and then went in some motion circular and straight up and down and you don't want to leave the glaze on there too long because you want to be able to wipe it back this gives you control if you keep working it without stopping now I take another part of the towel and I put a little bit of water on it. This helps me to rub the glaze off a little bit easier. And what I do is I wipe it back because I don't want streaks of brown everywhere. I basically want it to get into the grooves of the brush strokes left by the paint. And then I want to wipe it back so that it has a older look without that streaky look. Thank you. 
There will be times where it's hard to get up next to the shelves or in the corners. Take your gloved finger, dip it in the glaze, and then go ahead and put down in there. I use my spritzer water bottle to spray generously so that the glaze will drip all the way down into the cracks. And then I use my towel, wipe it back, and it gives it a nice consistent look without leaving gaps without the glaze. The glaze needed a little bit of time to dry, and then when it was, I came back and sealed it with a polycrylic. This is a water-based sealer and will protect your piece. I usually do two applications of sealer just for added protection. You do have to make sure that you're applying a thin coating because it will drip and you don't want to come back and find drips dried on your piece. So make sure that you check it over carefully once you've sealed it and then you can go ahead and do the second coat. Once your sealant has dried, we get to come back to the fun part of adding the peel and stick wallpaper. Now, like I said before, it is a little bit tricky, it takes a little bit of redoing and pulling it back up to make sure you don't have any bubbles or creases. But this particular brand of peel and stick wallpaper was very forgiving and I could pull it up a couple times and then put it back down. When I did put it on there and I got it kind of where I wanted, um, you need to take the back of the peel and stick, the, the paper part, and just kind of peel it while you're pushing the wallpaper down. So on your one side, you're, you're pushing the paper down, getting it to seal onto your piece, and the other one is peeling off the backing at the same time. It sounds difficult, but with a little bit of practice, um, it became quite easy. Now, I had just a tiny bit of excess, and that kind of bothered me, so I went ahead and took my sharp box cutting tool and trimmed it off. This was really easy. I just kind of followed the lines of the piece and pulled it up, no problem, and it gave me a really nice, crisp edge. I did add some felt um, and glued it onto the bottom of the hutch so that it would not scratch the cabinet once it was placed on top. By adding these affordable products, I was able to splurge on the new hardware from Hobby Lobby. I think it really made the piece, and I think it looks adorable. I hope you think so, too. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, as I appreciate each and every one of you. And have a great day, and go find some pieces to refinish.